word of welcome to the federal judicial system. And now, the chairman of the board of the Federal Judicial Center, the Chief Justice of the United States. Welcome to this Federal Judicial Center orientation program. Though I can't be with you in person today, I hope in the course of years to come to meet many of you individually during your service on the federal bench. Some years ago, Judge Jerome Frank wrote an article entitled, The Cult of the Robe, in which he discussed the unique role of judges in our society. With its connection to history and authority, the robe is a symbol of that position. But of course, becoming a federal judge means more than simply donning a robe. Your service symbolizes what Chief Justice Charles Evans Hughes called our national ideal of justice the distinctive character of our republic in having a judiciary as one of the three co-equal branches of the federal government. Within this system of three co-equal branches, however, there are important differences between the role of those in the political branches and those in the judiciary. Those who serve in Congress or in the executive branch must constantly take into account, account a variety of political interests and concerns and continually reappraise how these political concerns will affect them and their constituents. Not only is there nothing wrong about legislators responding to political pressure, but if they did not do so, they would soon cease to be legislators. Federal judges, of course, have no such constituency. We're not elected but appointed for what amounts to a life tenure. This tenure is designed to ensure that those who, as Chief Justice John Marshall said, have the duty to say what the law is, should not be influenced by the vagaries of current public opinion, nor captive to the needs of re-election. But another kind of restraint is placed on judges, placed there by the very nature of the judicial process. The judicial process is quite different from the process which obtains in the political branches. Judging is a uniquely deliberative task. A judge hears from both sides of a dispute and renders a reasoned judgment based upon what he conceives to be the merits of the case before him. The restraints imposed on judges by the nature of the judicial process are subtler and often more difficult to adhere to than the restraints imposed on the political branches by the electoral process but it is absolutely essential that judges do conform to these restraints. The American ideals of respect for the rule of law and equal justice for all are built on them. Each of you has been chosen for what is generally, generally regarded as not only a very important position in our society, but a very interesting and stimulating one. I wish each of you the best of luck in your judicial careers. And now I would like to introduce Judge Rhea Zobel, the director of the Federal Judicial Center, who will talk in greater detail about federal judicial administration and the resources that are available to you. I am Rhea Zobel, a United States District Judge and currently director of the Federal Judicial Center. On behalf of the Center, I would like to congratulate you on your appointment to the United States Court of Appeals. If we have not already met, I look forward to doing so soon. I know that at this point in your new career, your main interest is in learning and understanding your responsibilities. In that connection, I would like to speak with you briefly about the federal judiciary, its governance, and the agencies that will be of service to you. The national policy of the federal judiciary is the sole responsibility of the Judicial Conference of the United States. The Chief Justice chairs the conference. Its members are the Chief Judge of each Circuit Court of Appeals and the Court of International Trade, and the District Judge elected from each regional circuit. The conference meets twice a year in Washington, but much of its work is done through some 25 committees composed largely of circuit, district, bankruptcy, and magistrate judges. These committees consider issues relating to the court's budget, human resources, space, security, and automation, as well as amendments to the civil, criminal, bankruptcy, and appellate rules. The federal system is too large and too diverse, however, to be administered solely by a group of people sitting in Washington, D.C. 
That is why much of the system's operation is the responsibility of the judicial councils of the circuits. A circuit council is chaired by the chief judge of the circuit and includes an equal number of court of appeals and district judges. The councils monitor the state of the business of the courts in the circuit, including any backlogs. They approve district court operating plans in such areas as juror utilization and court reporters. And they play a key role in acting upon complaints, charging a judge's disability or misconduct. The chief judge of the circuit also has the statutory duty to call a conference of all judges in the circuit, usually with members of the bar. These circuit conferences, which are convened at least every other year, consider ways to improve the administration of justice. They also serve as a valuable bridge between bench and bar and as a source of ideas and innovations. Two agencies within the judicial system are primarily responsible for serving you throughout your judgeship. The Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts, usually known as the AO, might be described as the federal court's housekeeping agency. It is managed by a director who is appointed by the Chief Justice after consulting with the Judicial Conference. The AO administers the federal court's budget. It is responsible for space and personnel matters. It supports the judiciary's automation programs and its libraries. And it collects and publishes extensive statistics on all aspects of the judiciary's activities. The annual report of the director further describes the work of the AO and the various ways that agency can be helpful to you. And now a word about the Federal Judicial Center. The FJC is the federal court's agency for continuing education and research on judicial administration. Its policies are set by a board chaired by the Chief Justice. The board's members are six judges elected by the Judicial Conference of the United States and serving ex officio the director of the AO. The center provides orientation programs like this one, as well as numerous seminars, workshops, and other educational programs on a wide range of substantive and managerial topics. Center programs are developed to serve the needs of judges and their staffs. We will send you information about particular programs for judges as they are scheduled. Our annual report, a copy of which we earlier sent to you, provides details about the various facets of our work. You have also received our catalogs of publications and of audiovisual media programs. Some periodicals will come to you automatically, but all items in these catalogs are available to you. If there is anything you need that we can provide, just ask us. If you have any comments or suggestions, just tell us. I end as I began by congratulating you on your appointment. In a larger sense, I want to welcome you to the federal judiciary. Membership is a high honor. It is also a serious responsibility. Those who have come before you have served with courage, diligence, and dedication and they have kept this judicial system viable, strong, and independent. You have been given a unique opportunity to do your part and to serve our country. I know you will find it challenging and rewarding, and I wish you well. Mm -hmm.